enemy has a power play. Two for one. Your enemy can't kill if they're dead. Howdy there folks, this is Geist, also known as Hunter to my friends, and today we're going to be talking about Hush. Now Hush is a pinnacle bow that was sunset a while back, and we never really got it back, uh, or even Archer's Gambit, which was the perk that came on it. Uh, but I'm here to tell you today that it's kind of been reborn, and in a way it is back in the game. And it happened through a stealth buff. So here's Hush, I mean Vengeful Whisper, or rather Hush as it should have been. And there was a recent buff that happened to Sundering here, and it essentially allowed it so that breaking shields would allow the speed boost to come up. So the draw time boost and the reload boost. Now with this, and you're going to see with some comparisons here that I'm going to show up on the screen now, um, I'm showcasing a bunch of different roles with this bow, showing how fast it can be compared to the actual Hush, which was the original bow that has been sunset. And as you can see by most of these, they're just about on par. Now. Depending on the perk rolls you get, it's possible to be just about as fast as Hush, or even faster than the original Hush. Um, but even a not-so-great roll bow will be just a little bit slower. And so realistically speaking, there's a variety of different rolls that allow you to get this bow to be about as good as Hush. And the big difference between this bow and Hush is that this bow does not require you to hipfire it. So it can be good for controller players, MK players, console, PC. It doesn't matter your platform, it doesn't matter your input. This bow is gonna feel great for everybody. Um, now, a couple ways that you can proc this perk besides just breaking shields in Crucible is gonna be to uh, break a Titan's Barricade, to break a Stasis Crystal, or to break something like a Warlock Stasis Turret. This is not, there are a few downsides to the bow, or really just one major downside to the bow. And it honestly has nothing to do with the bow itself. The biggest downside to this bow right now is the resilience economy in Destiny, or player health, or really just the damage of precision bows. So right now, after lightweight bows recently got a buff, they're dealing 124 damage to the head. A precision bow is dealing 128 damage to the head. There really is no reason to use a precision bow except for this one, and that's only because it's able to get so fast. And it's able to do so just from landing a single headshot. Now, I hope that Bungie's going to be buffing precision bows at some point, or really just reworking bows in general, because they, they really, really need it. Um, they feel absolutely terrible to use right now, but that's let's not get into that right now. I've made a bunch of videos ranting about that. Um, what I do want to talk about is how to get this bow to work in Crucible for you. So, Sundering happens from breaking shields. In order to break shields, you want to land a headshot, because it's also going to proc Archer's Tempo. If you happen to get a roll that has Archer's Tempo and, you know, like a decent draw time, it doesn't have to be perfect. Even a 612 is great. A 612 with Archer's is going to feel fantastic. I was using a 612 Archer's with Hatchling, and I got a Wii Ran the second match that I tried it with. I do want to say, as, you know, one sort of disclosure about it, the worst thing I was talking about it with the Resilience, you can only get this perk to proc on a headshot on 8 Resilience and below. Furthermore, and this is the unfortunate part, if you don't land a perfectly drawn shot, it's going to be even lower than that. It's going to be 5 resilience or below, which is just terrible, honestly. It only covers like half of the resiliences. And it's really only an issue just because of the current damage profile of precisions, and it's an issue because of how precisions feel right now. Bows in general just feel right now, and because of the increased health, because of the double nerf that we got. So I'm hoping, you know, go ahead and farm this bow. And, and at some point, if anything changes, even the smallest buff, even if bows get like a 5% buff overall, which I think they all should get at this point, if they're going to stay as they are, then all of a sudden this bow is going to be working on any resiliences, and it's not going to require perfect drawn headshots, which is going to be great. So unfortunately, if you currently want to utilize this bow to the fullest potential, you probably need to be a hunter wearing Oath Keepers, which I don't really like, because I hate wearing Oath Keepers, they break my fashion. And it kind of feels like bow training wheels. But with what Bungie's done lately, Oath Keepers kind of just feel mandatory. So I guess it kind of is what it is. That being said, it's still a lot of fun to use. It's definitely the fastest bow you can get up front right now. 
Now something like a, maybe a fell teradiddle or a tripwire canary, a lightweight bow with archers and successful going is going to be just about as fast as well. But those require you to get kills. And you can do the same thing on this bow, which is even faster than those. If you have the archers successful 576 roll in this bow, uh, well number one I'm going to hate you. <laughs> because I farmed this bow for like, I probably about a week and a half before I finally got a roll I was satisfied with. And the role I was happy with was the one I showed a little bit earlier, which is the 576 Archer's Hatchling. I was trying for the Archer successful, but y'all, I killed that boss 308 times to try to get this bow, and I finally just said, I, I think I'm happy with this. And honestly, I like Strand and I like my Threadlings anyway, so it really complements my Threadling build. Um, now one last thing I want to bring up, um, how to farm this bow and how to farm it effectively. You're going to see on screen here just a little bit of footage that I pulled from a recent run. Uh, basically what you want to do, you want to load into the dungeon, you're going to run through that first little area, you're going to get to the boss, use your flag, whatever, go ahead and do the normal rotation to take down the boss. Um, I'm not going to go in too much detail with this, but for those of you that don't know, um, essentially the boss is going to throw the whole group into some cages, you're going to shoot all the eyes, everybody will break out of their cages, run down to the ground, capture one or two totems that the boss spawns, hopefully he spawns two, but fair warning, he's finicky about it. After that, damage phase, boom, easy. Now, don't worry about one phasing the boss, that's kind of difficult to do unless you have really great builds, but a two or three phase is perfectly acceptable. Um, after you kill the boss, and the moment you kill the boss, this is very, very, very important to try to do the proper rotation, because what I'm gonna tell you is a loop or a skip that will allow you to not have to run through the first part, so it'll allow you to farm him a little bit faster. As soon as the boss dies, the leader or the fire team leader needs to be looking over towards the cliff. As soon as the next boss, Heffen, the big eye, spawns. And I don't mean as he's kind of materializing, I mean when he fully spawns in. When you see him fully spawn, you need to be going into your menu and count. One Mississippi, two Mississippi, three Mississippi. On your third Mississippi, and I know this sounds juvenile, but trust me. On your third Mississippi, click launch on the dungeon. You're gonna to go to the dungeon node, you're gonna be ready to launch it, and on your third Mississippi, click launch. With this timing, it will make it work. The second most important thing, after you go and you reload, when you land, immediately go back into your menu, look at the dungeon again on the map, and click the reset button to reset your checkpoint. The reason is because you've sort of cheated the game a little bit, and you've reloaded between the boss's death and the next checkpoint which is being in the dungeon and uh, what that's going to do is it sort of tricks the game and it spawns you in as if the boss hadn't died yet and it kind of tricks it but you need to reset your checkpoint because it's going to be busted now if you don't remember to reset the checkpoint then it's not going to let this work so after you load in reset your checkpoint everybody jumps off the cliff which will reset the checkpoint for good and make it a real checkpoint and now you'll be at the boss and so you can just keep doing this on a loop over and over and over. And I know that's a little, it may sound difficult, but it's not. Once you get the hang of it, you'll be doing it just fine. In the hundreds of times that I killed this guy, I've managed to pull it off most of the time. I failed here and there, which if you fail occasionally, it's not the worst thing in the world. Because all you've got to do is just run through that first little bit. And it doesn't take too long. And if you think this method's too tedious, by all means, just run through the beginning. It's not terribly long, but it is definitely quicker to use this method. Um... And I highly recommend, as I said before, that you guys go ahead and farm this bow. Because with any kind of changes, we don't know what's going to happen. I mean, if bows get even the slightest buff, this bow is going to be the king of bows. As it stands right now, I can't really call anything the king of bows. Because it's just, well, not a lot feels great. And I'm kind of irritated about having to use Oathkeeper too. Maybe someday I'll get to have my spiky shoulders back. Or maybe we'll just get an Oathkeeper ornament that actually looks cool. Which would be pretty nice. But either way, um... This bow is great. I truly believe it is the reincarnation of Hush. It is Hush as it should have been. It's not quite as strong as Hush, because Hush was a guaranteed, okay, well this just happens if you land a headshot. Well, Hush, you also had to hip fire. So Hush was really only good on M and K or PC. And it's so much better to use this bow for any input, any platform. It's more usable, it's slightly weaker, but it's a lot more usable, and that's why I think it is a better version of Hush, and I think a lot of you are gonna enjoy it. So I highly recommend you get a hold of this, give it a try, um, and the other thing to remember is, as I showed you earlier in the video, you do not have to have the God Roll. You do not have to have a 576 Archers whatever, but if you do get a 576 Archers, you're good with that. 576 or 612 Archers, any of those are gonna be good. 
Um, as for perks, because I know you guys are going to want to know this, uh, I recommend going with either Elastic String, Draw Time Masterwork, and Archers. Those are like, you want that combo for sure, if you can get it. But if you can't, even if you only get Elastic String and Archers, that's still good. It's going to be a 612. If you only get, say, Polymer String and Draw Time Masterwork and Archers, that's also good. Really, the biggest thing about this bow is you kind of just want to have archers. If there's one perk that's the only thing that you get, I would say archers. Even a 648 with archers and sundering together is still about as fast as Hush is. And so you don't have to have the god roll, and that's what's so beautiful about this. Just keep farming until you get a roll that you're happy with that's moderately fast, and it's going to serve you well in the Crucible. If you're able to proc the perk on those resiliences and not get resilience checked, you're going to have roughly about a 0.7 time to kill, which is pretty daggum good for a bow. Um, so I highly recommend you guys give this a shot. I hope you found this helpful. Uh, I hope this lets you know what roles you should chase and how to effectively farm it. Uh, me personally, I'm going to go give it another shot and have some more fun with this bow. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you all in the next one.